And remember that each half of the soul is exercising its own free will. So while you're here on earth, you can independently, as a half of your soul, exercise free will independently from your soul mate, which actually means that you can make choices independent from their, what they would like you to make. And uh, the result of that, of course, is if those choices are disharmonious with love, your soul condition just keeps on going into a more degrading state. And as your soul condition goes into a more degrading state, so does your physical form and your spirit body form. So there's many people who pass over into the spirit world who come and tell you, I'm fine. In reality, they have very, very poor looking spirit bodies and they're very disappointed, but they don't know what else to say other than I'm still alive and I'm fine to you. Does that make sense? And there's lots of spirits here in that position at the moment who, who are listening to this. They're in this terrible condition from a physical point of view. They're wanting to have sex, but they don't, you know, they can, it, sex is a dim, dark memory for them, for many of them, because they're so ugly that they can't even bring themselves to look at another person, let alone have sex with them. Do you follow me? So there's a lot of that going on in the spirit world in the hells, or in the first sphere of the spirit world. And it's all to do with this thing called soul condition. As a soul condition, the choices that we make on earth, as we make those choices, if the choices are in disharmony with love, our soul condition degrades, and we can do that independently of what our soulmate is doing. Does that make sense? So, just say, like, someone's in the 22nd sphere, right? And, yep. some, and their soulmate's like, dark nothing, and they're like, in the first sphere. Wouldn't that other half of their soul being in the 22nd sphere sort of raise their vibration up? Yes, just with one proviso, though. You can't get into the 22nd sphere state without your soulmate in the same state. So any, any, any state under that, the 21st sphere and under, what you're saying is de dead right. The, the whole part, the beautiful part about soulmates is if one half of the soulmate grows in love, the other half of the soulmate feels a stronger and stronger attraction to them, whether they're in the hills or in not very good condition or not. So this is why it's so important to focus firstly on your relationship with God. And if they were in that high like position they couldn't even like attract their soulmate sort of thing because their soulmate's so low like they you know what i mean it wouldn't even the law of attraction wouldn't even bring them together no the law of attraction does bring them together most of the time the the spirit who's in the higher location knows who their soulmate is way before the spirit in the lower location knows yeah. so they're often praying for them and trying to help them and they're waiting for them to get into a certain condition before they physically help them. So the likelihood of a soulmate couple being in the first and twenty-first sphere is highly unlikely. Yeah, very unlikely. I was just saying that. Yeah, most of the time, if if a if the soulmate enters the one state, there is such a attraction for the other half of the soul to to be with them. And this, and by that stage, the person in the one state knows who their soulmate is for certain so they are constantly trying to assist them anyway so it's highly unlikely that that would continue as the person's growing and growing into higher states in higher dimensions